Hello, uh, welcome to my presentation on creating consistent golden images with Azure DevOps pipelines and Packer. Uh, my name is Ryan Butler. I'm a senior technical consultant with the head and I'm currently a CTP. A uh, little overview of what we'll be doing today. Um, we'll go over what Packer is and why we're gonna be utilizing Packer. Uh, what are we gonna be doing with Packer and the pipelines? Um, going over some prerequisites as far as what we'll need to kind of get started um, with Azure, Azure DevOps, and then kind of going into what Citrix media or Citrix binaries will we'll need to download from Citrix. And then going kind of right into our setup uh, as far as what we'll need for Azure DevOps, as far as the repository, kind of creating the initial pipeline. And then we're going to get right into the build. Uh, most of this um, presentation is going to be demo based and hopefully fairly interactive to kind of get you going pretty quickly in creating an image. Um, and then after we kind of get our initial image built, um, kind of go over what um, troubleshooting steps you might need to take and then any type of artifacts. Um, don't worry too much about what you know the artifacts are right now. Uh, we'll get into that during the presentation. So what is Packer? So Packer is a, you know, a single binary file uh, from a company called HashiCorp. Um, you know, this is right from HashiCorp's website, you know, automates the creation of any type of machine image. It embraces modern configuration management by encouraging you to use automated scripts to install and configure the software within your package made images. Um, there's basically kind of two components of Packer that we really want to talk about today um, is the builder. Uh, so the builder is basically responsible for bringing up the actual like VM that you're going to be installing things on. Um, there's multiple builders out there from AWS, Azure, GCP. There's even a VMware one. And then what we're going to be doing is taking um, different scripts and kind of third party configuration management tools called provisioners and basically utilizing those against our image to kind of get the final product that we want. Um, you know, is such as, you know, installing like PowerShell scripts, uh, Chef or, you know, Ansible. Um, this kind of demonstration or this presentation is really going to go over the following. Um, we're going to basically build up a Packer image. Uh, it's going to be a Windows 2019 build. Uh, we're going to install some Windows features, just some kind of out-of-box uh, features that you may or may not want. Um, install any needed PowerShell modules. Uh, this is going to be specifically the Azure um, AZ PowerShell modules that will be needed for some of our scripting. Um, installs any, any applications via Chocolatey. Um, those are going to be all done with Ansible, and we'll go over how that's configured. Um, then we're going to basically install and configure the Citrix VDA. Um, install and execute Citrix Optimizer. Um, then we're going to kind of create some artifacts. And again, we'll go over those in a little uh, better detail later on here. And then we're going to basically validate the image with InSpec, or we're basically going to take a look at our image, make sure it's the way we want it by running some tests against it. And then we're finally going to copy that image or that VHT file over to a storage container that uh, the Citrix desktop service will be able to use then. Um, so some prerequisites here. Um, the first step is you'll want to go right to the GitHub uh, repo that I have set up for this presentation. Uh, the URL is, is linked above. Um, for Azure, we'll need at least a storage account. You'll want to have the access key available. Um, I would recommend just creating a brand new storage account. There's really no need to use an existing one here. Um, we'll need a service information for build process. Um, this uh, service principle is going to be used to basically create our VM and then um, basically create that and then tie that to our storage account. So if you need a brand new one, um, I've just included the command that you can basically run from a CLI. Um, we will need the Citrix VDA installed. Um, I do have a direct link in the GitHub repo if you'd like. And then also we would like the Citrix optimizer basically downloaded. Um, you don't have to do anything with it at this point, just have it downloaded onto your desktop um, and get it ready to go. And then next, uh, we'll have to have an Azure DevOps account and then access to a project. Um, this can be a brand new project. It doesn't have to be anything special, um, just an Azure DevOps account and access to a project. Uh, for this demonstration, I'm using all free accounts. Um, so there should be very little um, cost involved uh, with the Azure DevOps side. 
So like I said, uh, this presentation is going to be very demo focused, really getting into the weeds quick. Um, so I'm going to pause here um, and then we can get started right into the demo. All right, uh, so let's get right into the demo here. Um, so first browser tab that I have open is just Azure. Um, I'm in a kind of a dedicated resource group that I created and then a single storage account. Um, within the storage account, I have some containers configured. So here on the left, um, I have gold images. Um, this is going to be the location where the VHD files will actually end up actually after Packer and everything is um, completed. Um, this is what you'll actually want to use for this, uh, the Citrix service to basically consume and use those golden images. Um, the images folder is more for just kind of the Packer process. Um, some temporary images will be kind of created in there as you kind of move along. Um, within the media container, um, you will want to upload the, the Citrix binaries that I asked you to download, uh, specifically the Citrix optimizer zip. You don't need to extract it or anything like that. You'll want the whole zip uh, file here. And then the VDA server um, that we'll be utilizing. So this is the server um, since we'll be using uh, this on 2019. Um, I do have direct links in the GitHub repo if you need uh, those specifically. So kind of moving along here, this is the Azure DevOps project that I have created. Um, this is just a dedicated project that I have for this. Um, nothing else is in here. Um, and then I have another tab uh, with the GitHub repo um, here. Um, if you wanted to kind of scroll down in the readme, there's some kind of dedicated um, you know, links as far as the Citrix VDA, Citrix Optimizer, and then a few other tidbits of information as we kind of move through here to kind of follow along. Um, so kind of getting started. So now that we have our storage account, uh, we have our service principle uh, created and documented, uh, we're really ready to kind of get moving here. So on the Azure DevOps side, we're gonna go over to repos, and we are going to import uh, the GitHub repo that I have. So we're just going to grab the HTTPS, copy of this here. Gonna paste that right into here. Let's give it a couple moments here and it will import in. All right. So now you'll see the same kind of structure as from the GitHub side. So you really don't need the GitHub uh, tab open if you would let, if you want to close it out. Um, so uh, here is basically the files that we're going to be utilizing. Um, if you expand out the Packer folder, you'll kind of see the structure here. So we'll kind of start from the bottom. So the pipeline folder is what is actually going to be running um, the Azure DevOps pipeline. Um, then we have basically the VDA.json. This is actually the Packer template um, that's going to be run, uh, kind of describing out the builders and the different provisioners. And then we kind of have some supporting files with this, um, an Ansible playbook, some inspect um, kind of controls that we'll be talking about, and then just some PowerShell scripts specifically for the Citrix optimizer and the Citrix VDA. So what we want to do is kind of be focused on this pipeline.yaml. This is going to be what tells Azure DevOps pipelines uh, what to actually run and how. So we want to go over to pipelines and we want to create a, a new pipeline. We're going to select the Azure repos git because that's where we have that imported. We're going to select the repository that we imported to. We're going to select the existing Azure Pipelines YAML file. And then you should be able to see the YAML, the pipeline.yaml file um, in the dropdown. And then we're going to hit continue. So it's going to bring this in uh, fairly quickly. As you can see here, it's, it's the pipeline file that we just looked at is here. Um, just kind of walking through this. Uh, the parameters that I have configured are going to kind of prompt you um, for what type of machine OS that we'll want to create. Um, for this presentation, I've just focused on 2019 data center. Uh, the name of the golden image, VHD, for right now it's just CTX-VDA. 
Um, then we're going to go kind of into the actual build process. We're going to use Ubuntu to basically run Packer on. We're get, going to check out the code from our Azure repository. Uh, we're going to utilize Python um, for Ansible. So we're going to install Ansible and then with uh, pip and then also pywin or pywin rm. Uh, Basically, this is what Python needs to communicate with our VM uh, via WinRM. Um, and then we're going to install Ruby. This is going to be part of our inspec installation, and which is actually going to use Gem to do so. And then finally, we're finally going to kick off the Packer build. Um, we have the command here on line 45 where we're going to basically uh, build uh, and then utilize our um, VDA template, our VDA.json template. And then after it's finally done, it's basically the next two lines are parsing out where the location of the v VHD is and then copying that over to the storage container um, that we mentioned earlier, which would be gold images. Um, as you can see here, there's a lot of different variables and things like that being utilized um, to kind of control where things go and how things operate. Um, so we'll need to kind of create those and we'll go over those very shortly here. Uh, the next is just kind of publishing the artifacts. Um, so we're basically just kind of taking some artifacts that cre get created, such as like a hotfix.json uh, that gets created as part of our, our Packer build. Um, this is going to basically uh, display and describe the different hotfixes or uh, operating system patches that are installed as part of our image. Um, also, we are going to take a artifact of any packages installed on our Windows image, such as any PowerShell modules or installed applications. And then finally, just we're just going to take a Packer manifest, um, which is basically just the location of our VHD Okay, so once we have kind of our, our pipeline kind of imported here, we'll need to kind of create variables. So the variables are gonna be used for the pipeline run. So in order to set those, we'll want to go up here and select variables and then select a new variable. And the variables that we'll need to, need to create, you can see right here either on the GitHub page or the Azure DevOps page. And I have a table of the different variables that we'll need to kind of create. So any of the mentions where the example is secret, what you want to do here is you want to keep the secret. So basically it just kind of hides the, the, um, the variable um, value from any kind of output. So it kind of keeps that secret only basically utilized in environmental variables. Um, so to kind of keep that secure. So we're gonna pause here and actually go through and create all these variables. You'll wanna make sure the syntax and the case is the same. Um, and then basically the, the description is used to kind of de um, demonstrate you know, what, what they are. And then hopefully these examples give you an idea of, of what they're used for. Um, so let's pause this and then create our variables and we'll move along. Okay, so hopefully you have all these variables uh, created. Um, you can kind of see here just one final list the way that I have them entered. Um, remember the case of the variable name is important. Um, and then hopefully you have your uh, variables that that are sensitive, uh, you have those marked as secrets. You can kind of see here how I have everything listed. And then we're ready to run the pipeline. So when you're ready to go, you're gonna hit run. You're gonna leave it on the master branch because that's where we, we have everything. Uh, we're gonna leave the 2019 data center. Um, and then if you wanted to change the name of the VHD, um, you can, but for the sake of this, we're just gonna leave it ctx-vda. And then we're going to run this. And now you'll see here the job is, is being queued up. Um, so if you actually select it here, um, you'll see it starting to build, initialize the job, and then basically kind of going through all those steps that we discussed earlier. So this usually takes anywhere from like 35 to 50 minutes or so. Um, so we're gonna kind of let this go. 
Um, now, if we come back over to the actual code um, within the Packer directory, we're going to kind of go into more detail in regards to this VDA.json. So the variables being leveraged here are basically tied to the variables of the pipeline. So those are environmental variables getting passed into the Packer uh, run. Um, and then they're being leveraged within any type of, of Packer process that's needed. Um, so these will kind of match into what those variables that you've created. Um, so for the builder, uh, we're leveraging Azure RM. Um, this is where the service principle information goes um, that's used to basically create um, the VM. Um, by default, what pack, how Packer works in an Azure environment, it basically spins up a random um, resource group and then it also spins up um, like a random vnet and everything to connect directly to the internet um, so if you do have type of um, different connectivity that you might need uh, that's located on prem or within a vnet of some other like file server you can actually set your packer build or your packer template to leverage like an existing vnet or resource group if you really needed to. Um, for demonstration purposes, I'm just leveraging everything over the internet. Um, so I didn't need to include that here. Um, as you can kind of see, this is just how we're communicating with our image. Uh, we're leveraging WinRM. Um, we're just gonna use a default name of, of Packer. And then the location again is tied to the variable. And then the VM size of our kind of our temporary image uh, is uh, mentioned here. So uh, once we kind of get the image up, it's going to wait for WinR WinRM to communicate. Once the communication is established, it's going to basically run PowerShell. Um, this, I'm just running an Ansible script, or, or script provided by Ansible to enable uh, WinRM um, for Ansible to communicate with, with the image. After that is configured, um, then I am leveraging Ansible and tie running a playbook and we're going to hop over to that playbook real quick so within this playbook i don't have a lot going on but i just wanted to kind of give you an idea of, of what's possible and how quick and easy it is um, so i'm just installing some windows features again it's pretty vanilla as far as what i'm um, adding um, it's looking at it if there's a reboot needed it's going to reboot and basically reestablish. Um, I'm adding the AZ uh, PowerShell module, which I need for the Citrix optimizer and the Citrix VDA script. And then I'm installing any packages um, or um, applications. As you can see here, Google Chrome, VS Code, 7-Zip, Notepad++, Putty FS Logic, Winderstat. So again, you can feel free to customize this any which way you would like. Um, this is all happening over the internet. Again, I'm not utilizing other than uh, the Citrix VDA and Citrix Optimizer. Everything is coming down directly from the internet. So going back to our VDA here. Um, again, just calling that base YAML. Uh, we're gonna restart one more time just to start fresh. And then we're basically gonna lever install the Citrix VDA. Um, I'm not going to actually go into the script, but what how the script works is it actually copies down um, the VDA uh, binary from the storage account utilizing the access key that you provided into the variable. And it will install that. And then with any type of VDA controllers, types, options, uh, switches that you might need. And it will restart once and then basically resume itself. Uh, you'll see here it re runs the same script again. Um, once it's all finished, we're going to restart again, and then we're going to install uh, Citrix Optimizer and then execute the Citrix Optimizer. So uh, some of the newer versions of Citrix Optimizer actually include like an auto detect feature, which is really handy in this circumstance, where all you really need to do is just launch it and execute, and it will determine the OS and then determine the template, uh, which is really handy. Um, so we're getting some optimizations that way. And then here is where we're actually generating our um, artifact files. So I'm just running some simple PowerShell, um, outputting those to a uh, JSON file, and then I'm downloading those back um, to the, the build agent, uh, the Azure DevOps build agent. 
um, that will actually then end up being published uh, from the Azure DevOps build agent up to kind of the pipeline artifacts. And I'll show you where those artifacts uh, end up. Um, so after the artifacts are downloaded, um, I'm running inspect. So inspect is a pretty handy utility to basically check and test and validate your image to make sure it's what you want it to be. Um, so if you go back here into the basic validation folder, I have kind of just one main control uh, created. Um, it's pretty simple. Um, it's just checking to make sure that it's Windows. Hopefully that passes. Um, it's checking Citrix broker agent services, um, you know, that it should be installed, it's enabled, it's running. Uh, make sure Chrome is installed. Uh, FS Logic registry is there. And then uh, any kind of features that I installed prior installed there. So I just wanted to give an idea of some of the possibilities of the testing. Um, testing really becomes more and more important as you depend on kind of sources and things outside of your control, such as chocolatey packages. You really don't have all the control over those since they're kind of publicly facing or even the hot fixes and operating system patches from an Azure um, image. Since you don't know exactly what's installed, um, you'll wanna really test and validate your image and make sure everything's to your liking before you kind of quote unquote put that into production. So going back here to the VDA. Um, so after the inspect, it's going to leverage or it's going to create one more um, artifact. And that again is just going to be the location of the um, the VDA or the VHD file that gets created with Packer. And you can see here, it's still kind of ticking away. It's just starting to kick off the Packer job. Um, we'll just wait here shortly and we should start to see this kind of kicking off. Okay, so Packer is running here. So I'm just gonna show you quickly on how this kind of looks here. So we're just going to take a look for this resource group and you'll see here it's generating the key vault that is used for the authentication that Packer initially uses. But again, we're running that WinRM uh, Ansible script to kind of give further access. Um, so you'll actually be able to kind of see, you know, the VM pop up and the different components as far as like the public IP um, as that kind of moves through its stages. So we're going to stop right here and then we'll see in about 35 to 40 minutes. All right, so hopefully everything ran correctly on your pipeline. Um, the big green check mark is a good thing. That means it has successfully run. Um, and you'll just kind of get a snapshot of the overall you know, pipeline run as far as the duration. Mine ran 42 minutes. Um, here are the artifacts that I've been talking about. So if you click on the three published, you'll see the installed updates, which is a hotfix.json again. So if we wanted to download and take a look at that, that would include basically an output of all the different hotfixes and operating system patches on there. Uh, the Packer manifest, uh, that would give you the location of the, the VHD um, before copying it over to the gold images uh, container. And then the packages or the PS modules uh, basically says, you know, what applications or packages are installed within the image. So if you wanted to go a little bit further, um, you could basically click on any one of these steps in the job. Um, specifically, you know, if you wanted to take a look at the, uh, the running the Packer job, you can see all the different uh, scripts or the different operations as far as like the Ansible playbook and things like that that have run. Um, one kind of piece of information here. So if you scroll all the way down to the bottom, you'll actually see this output here in red. And this is the inspect test um, kind of outputting, you know, the tests or the checks that it's done on the image. Um, so again, kind of going over those images or those tests, you can see the OS check pass, the broker agent, um, Chrome, FS logic, you know, those things that we have set in our control. So if you start getting failures for any reason, this is usually the best place to check is this running Packer um, area. And you, usually too, if it fails, you'll see a big red uh, red X here, but this output will actually give you pretty, pretty good output of what's all happening and where the issues are. Um, you know, even for example, if you kind of scroll through this, you'll see all the different applications that are getting installed, uh, the features that we discussed. 
um, the different communication paths are, and everything as it's kind of moving along. Um, as we scroll a little further here, we'll actually see the installation of the Citrix VDA um, and then optimizers running. And you'll actually get the output of the optimizer run as far as all the different changes is that it's done to the OS. And then finally, you'll see kind of here again, those artifacts, those are just copying up those different JSON files. So again, if anything starts occurring within your run and you start getting failures, uh, the best place to check here is within this running packer. Um, you shouldn't run into too many issues with the other steps. Um, but again, if there's a failure, you'll see a red X, just click on that, try to identify you know, where the issue uh, occurs. There has been times, for example, that uh, some of the chocolatey uh, packages for whatever reason won't install, You know whether they're getting updated or there's a missed file somewhere along the way. So that's one of probably the most common ones. Um, but if you have like an on-prem um, type chocolatey environment, you shouldn't run into those issues. Um, so kind of jumping over to the Azure side here, back to the storage account uh so here within the images we're just going to have that vhd file that was created um bef before it was copied um so you'll want to make sure that you kind of look at these and make sure that you don't keep a lot of these around for long periods of time um, so i'm just going to go ahead and delete that And then we'll go back here. And then within the gold images, you'll actually see we have that ctx-vda-vhd. And uh, this is basically ready for the Citrus Cloud Services to be deployed um, to whatever machine catalog you would like. Um, here's just kind of an example of, of showing what this would look like. Um, just note the different um, numbers here. This was just what I was using while testing. Um, and then this could be used then to deploy you know, your VHDs with all your images. Hopefully this presentation helped uh, give an idea of how Packer works and hopefully gives you an idea of how you can leverage Packer in an automated uh, pipeline environment. Um, if you're looking for more information as far as configuration or different um, provisioners, providers, things like that from a HashiCorp perspective, um, the documentation is, is pretty good uh, from the Packer website, um, just packer.io uh, slash docs. It's a great resource to check out the different parameters um, and different configurations that you might need. Um, really want to thank you uh, for taking the time out and viewing this presentation, and hopefully it uh, helps you on your automation journey. Thanks.